Chelmsford, an English city 30 miles northeast of London in the county of Essex. Chelmsford was only granted city status in 2012, but it is home to a 15th century cathedral. Sitting upon a Bronze Age settlement, the town was once occupied by the Romans, and at the time it was called Caesar Romagus. I think I pronounced that right. Which roughly translates to Caesar's Marketplace. So I can only imagine that musicians have been in this area for a fair while, playing to the fair Caesar. Oh, Caesar. Charles Dickens once visited Chelmsford and supposedly called it the dullest, most stupid place on earth. All because he was frustrated that he couldn't pick up a newspaper on a Sunday morning. Perhaps had there been some rad buskers out that day, he'd have said something completely different. With all this history, and the potential to prove Charles Dickens wrong, I decided to head to Chelmsford to see what it's like for street entertainment. Yes, my friends! Here's how I got on busking in Chelmsford. Now then, welcome to Chelmsford. Look at this Diddy Cathedral over here. I have been to many of England's cathedral cities in the last year, um, but this one is very small, but very pretty, and they've just cut the grass. It smells amazing. Ah, right, we're here in Chelmsford, in Essex. My first ever time busking in Essex. And my first time in Chelmsford as well. Never been here before. Seems kind of small, but like quaint and Really, really pretty. The views from the train were pretty cool. So whilst I go and find somewhere to set up, let's go through the rules for busking in Chelmsford. The rules for busking in Chelmsford. Chelmsford City Council state, you do not need a license to busk in Chelmsford, but we do require you to follow the code of conduct in our busking policy. Now the busking policy is a relatively lengthy, boring looking document. Luckily, the web page on which it is located does a job of sort of simplifying everything down that is in the policy, so you can just read it on there. However, because I am ARP, and on this YouTube channel, we do not mess around. I've gone through the official busking policy with a fine tooth comb, and I've created my own simplified version. That way, none of us miss a trick. This first section is just an overview of the policy. The council asked buskers to follow this policy to help create a community where performers, street traders, businesses, and residents share public spaces in cooperation and harmony. So here come the official guidelines. Number one, busking is permitted between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Two, they recommend moving location after one hour, moving to somewhere that's at least 50 meters away. Number three, amplified voice slash music should not be so loud that it causes a nuisance. They love the word nuisance when it comes to buskers, don't they? It's like that's the word, that's the negative word that you can come up with. Nuisance. Number four, please do not repeat music in the same location. Acts with varied content are more popular. Woo! Chelmsford City Council coming out with a top tier busking advice. Number five, do not make use of street furniture. Number six, do not obstruct pedestrians, trading stools, fire exits, cash points or doorways. Number seven, do not leave equipment unattended. Number eight is a very long winded way to say don't litter and clean up after yourself. Number nine, buskers are permitted to receive voluntary donations. Number 10, the public should never feel coerced into giving buskers money. Coerced. Some fancy language going on up in this busking policy. Number 11, a street trader's license is required if you do wish to sell merchandise. Number 12, buskers must be over the age of 14. Number 13, essentially this is saying be non-threatening and consider getting some public liability insurance. Number 14 only really applies to you if you're gonna draw a large crowd. It says that you need to be able to relay what the police are saying onto your crowd and they need to be able to disperse if necessary. One day I do really hope I can draw a large crowd. Like get this channel, get LRP to the point where I can just say I'm going to be busking in a place and a small crowd will show up. I'll have to call the council and let them know that's what's going on. 
Imagine. Number 15, do not cordon off part of the pavement, e.g. with rope. I do wonder if this has been put in here because somebody actually did that. I just sectioned off a part of the pavement, was like, I'm busking here. And there's nothing you can do about it. Number 16, do not perform with animals. Number 17, blades can be used, but they must be blunt and handled with care. Blimey. <laughs> Number 18, if fire is used in your act, they recommend a wet towel, fire blanket, or extinguisher to be easily accessible. Number 19, all fuel should be low flash. For all those dragons out there, I'm assuming this applies to all the fire breathers. Number 20 just says, be polite. Number 21, no alcohol or drugs. Number 22, no antisocial behavior. And finally, the last bit is just on how conflict gets resolved. Easy work. Of course, we could have just looked at the simplified version on the web page, but where's the fun in that? You gotta do these things properly. I had absolutely no issues regarding any of this whilst I was in Chelmsford, as you're about to see. So let's get on with my day. Number one. So it would turn out that Chelmsford is quite the popular spot for street music. We had some amazing work on up. All the beer and all the serving pools. Being that up until 2012, it was considered a town, the place is pretty small, which means there isn't a whole lot of space when it comes to having multiple buskers in the center. Instead of working, we go to work this house on now. And unfortunately for me, I was a bit late to the party. Despite arriving at 11am, there are already several performers set up and playing and doing their thing. So the situation is, I just walked through town and there's already three buskers in this tiny little place. I might have to go and ask one if I can take over once they're done. Oh, oh well, two hour journey here it was. So if I do a two hour journey here and don't get to play, then that'll suck. But the good news is it's clearly a very good place for busking. Otherwise there wouldn't be other buskers out and about with there. I wandered up and down the high street and scoped out the spots that the other buskers had chosen to play in. It seems to me that there are four main busking spots in the city centre. The first is at the top of the high street, outside Shire Hall. Unfortunately for me though, on the day I was in Chelmsford there were roadworks going on here which meant it was completely inaccessible. The second is on the junction outside Lloyd's Bank. This has a very heavy flow of foot traffic due to its location between the shopping centers and the high street itself. The third is on the junction of Springfield Road, outside Marks and Spencers. And there were a few market stalls set up here on the day I was in Chelmsford, and it meant that there were lots and lots of people ready to be entertained. And lastly, at the bottom of the high street, there is Stone Bridge, which is where I eventually found myself set up for spot one. Now, due to being the fourth busker to set up that morning, things started slow, as expected. The problem with being in a small place with lots of other buskers is that I find you kind of all dilute each other. I never find that I do that well in this type of situation. Six songs in. 
and we've made a pound. This reminds me of busking on Brighton beachfront when it's like a really hot summer's day and there's just loads of buskers out and it means that there's just too many of you and it means no one gets any attention because there's too many of you. There's now four people busking in this town or city but it's, it's small enough to be a town. It's all right though. It's a sunny day and it's the school holidays. I think that members of the public will often give a donation to the first busker they see or they won't give any donations because they're simply overwhelmed by the amount of buskers that they do see or they're complete legends and they give a donation to every single one of you People talk about baby yeah. Say you're doing your own, 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 own. However, it wasn't all bad in spot number one. The sun was shining and I honestly was just stoked that I'd actually got a spot. There was a hot minute where I worried that I was gonna be waiting around for a long time. So on one hand, I'm glad that I know that the donations aren't doing well because there's loads of other buskers in town. So it's, it's better than just not knowing why the bus isn't going well. It has picked up a little bit, which is cool. When situations like this happen, I just get dead into the music. Stop worrying about what, what's happening outside my little bubble. I act as if I'm playing the Milton Keynes Bowl, which if you didn't know is my bucket list goal. I want to play the Milton Keynes Bowl like Green Day did back in 2005. I just imagine I'm there and just play as if I'm doing it. it seems to work. It was obvious to me that the presence of lots of other buskers meant less acknowledgement and less donations. But there's something reassuring about knowing why it isn't going so well, rather than not having a clue. So when it comes to this kind of situation, I just try to remain completely present. I take a look at my surroundings and realize I'd still rather be doing this than, I don't know, sat in an office job that I really don't like. I close my eyes and just try and get as into the music as possible. There's just so much magic in playing and performing for me. It's when I feel most complete. It's a deep-rooted connection to, I don't know, my soul. And for me, it's hard to be in a dampened mood for very long when it comes to playing and performing music. This presence also helps because you never know what might happen in busking. You never know when the other buskers might be finishing. You never know if some real generous person is about to walk past and hand you a wedge of cash. You also don't know who you're playing to. You might be playing to the producer of a new TV show who's gonna think, do you know what? That busker would do very well on my TV show. So it's worth just playing your heart out. I'd say that overall, the reaction in spot one was super positive. It's clear that Chelmsford knows how to behave around a busker. And I'd actually done better in donations than I thought I had. All right then, welcome to the cathedral again. Spot number one then, let's review it. Tough, a real tough spot. But the sun was shining, I got a bit of sunburn and it didn't go as bad as I thought it had. The total for the spot was 19 pound and 6p and I played for an hour and 40 minutes. Did I play for an hour and 40 minutes? I played from 10 to 12 to 108. No, I played for an hour and, I played for about an hour and 20 minutes. 
Dang, my math. So it wasn't all bad. And to give a review of Chelmsford, Chelmsford's lovely. The people are really receptive. I think the trouble was is there was there were three other buskers already in town, you know? I was a fourth and I was at the very end and I think that spot particularly, it's just a bit too far out. Your crowd are the people leaving town or just arriving and they're not ready for a busker yet. But yeah, that was spot one. Not too bad at all. On to spot two. Spot number two. So it turned out that two of the other three buskers had actually finished and, and clearly left, leaving just myself and the violin player in the city centre. As well as a very friendly gentleman who was making blue art, dressed as a pirate and was on stilts. In fact, my very tall pirate balloon making friend was actually pitched up outside Lloyd's bank. And I asked him if he'd be cool with me playing there too. He said it would be fine. I guess we were very different acts and it meant that we weren't really gonna conflict with each other. And things started off way better here than in spot one. It became evident that this is probably one of the more prime busking spots. As I was playing through my first few songs of the set, littered with smiles and singing along, and an increase in donations when compared to the other spot. My violin playing friend had clearly stopped because he walked past and decided to take his lunch break sat watching me. It's just part of this busking community, right? There's this universal understanding between us all through this shared love of performing and playing and entertaining. I think it means there's little to no animosity. This spot is ideal because you have foot traffic rolling from all sides. It's also a great sized space. You get sound reflection from the building, meaning you kind of get your own monitors and you can hear yourself. So we are six songs in, which is where I spoke to you on the first set the first time it's going so much better i think it's helped by the fact that i think all the other buskers they don't seem to be uh in town i saw the violin guy walk past which was cool we had a little wave but yeah i can't hear anybody so i think i'm now the only one at this point and i'm also in a much better spot way more foot traffic and people like who are in town not leaving town so that's good The problem with these busking adventures I do, when it comes to traveling far like I did to Chelmsford, it was like a two hour journey from Brighton, is it means I have a fairly lengthy journey to get home. Places to go, places to find peace and quiet. You can live in a van, take a flight out, escape the riot. I think in Chelmsford, if I hadn't had so far to go home, I probably would have set up for a third time or spent a bit longer in spot two. But after an hour and 20 minutes, I decided to call it a day.
A universe from nothing inside my mind, it is on fire. It had been a way more successful busk. For the overall reaction, it just was a lot stronger. It felt more friendly. It felt more welcome. And it was definitely helped by the fact that there were less buskers about. Inside the machine is all that you know, that's how you are, you need to own. But also I'd say that this spot is just better. If you find yourself in Chelmsford, try and set up here, rather than the bridge anyway. Where do life go? When breath becomes air, this is going to hurt, you know. You're a millionaire. You're rich with the number of times that you said at the start. You're for real. Yeah, you're really going to go. <sighs> Is the only way Essex? I'm not sure. I know that Chelmsford is a cool place. I felt very safe here. It definitely has a big busking scene, which is evident because it's a Tuesday. But it is the first nice day of the year. Like, one of. I think the last two days have been really nice. So maybe that brought a load of people out and about. Maybe if you came here on a slightly overcast, slightly grey day, maybe you'd do a bit better because you'd be the only one around. But I had a good time. Spot number two there was a way better spot. If you do come to Chelmsford, I recommend going there or going where I saw my violin fiddle playing friend outside Marks and Spencers. That seems to be the prime spot. Spot two was more successful. Again, I think I played for an hour and 20 minutes and I made 27 pound and 6p. So there's today's total on the screen. My train ticket here was 31 pound and 5p. But here's the thing. I don't think you'd be coming to Chelmsford from Brighton if you're like a normal person who doesn't make these YouTube videos. Like I make this video for people that live in and around this area or might happen to be traveling through. Like I wouldn't come out my way to Chelmsford on a normal day. This isn't gonna become a bread and butter busk place. This is just a video more for you than it is for me. Although I do absolutely love that this is what I do. Like, this is my life. What a crazy thing to do with life. But I couldn't be more stoked, honestly. Um, hopefully, with better weather comes some crazy good busks. And I'm going to get better at announcing where I'll be. So stay tuned to the community posts on my YouTube channel. I'm going to start posting dates and days and places I'll be in. And that gives you the opportunity to come meet me and see me and we can hang out and talk busking. But without further ado, back to future me. Chelmsford. I'm not sure what Charles Dickens was on about. I found it far from dull and stupid. In fact, it was so bright that I even got sunburned, metaphorically and physically. Whatever that means. I definitely recommend busking in Chelmsford. Lovely place. And even on a busy day with other buskers. And if you're not a busker, then it's clearly a good place to go and see some top tier street talent. Maybe just bring a few pound coins if, if you do do that. You can be one of those legends then. Part of the reason I'm so adamant on hitting a thousand subscribers and then building this YouTube channel even bigger, much bigger, is that I want to build something that's bigger than me here. Like I said, I'm kind of creating a busking encyclopedia. And one that's already helping other buskers, which I couldn't be more stoked for. I want to show musicians what's possible. I want to show everyone that a career in music is realistic. It's not a pipe dream. But if I can get this YouTube channel to a point where it's monetized and brings me a bit of money, it means I can be more ambitious with these videos. It means I can journey further afield, cover the whole UK, and then some. Europe, the US, places I haven't even thought of going. And if you could help me on that journey, it would mean the world if you just click the subscribe button. That's the current plan anyway. Who knows if it will change, adapt, but I like it. Thank you for watching this video. If you are a regular busker to Chelmsford, please leave any other advice that I might have missed in the comments below. Give this video a like if you liked it. I've already told you to hit subscribe, so what are you waiting for? And if you are a true fan, then turn those notifications on.
I am August Radio Project. I make videos every week. They come out on Monday. Until the next one, maybe watch the one on the screen. Go check out the others on the channel. And let me know any other videos you think I should make. Give me a comment, man. Have a wonderful day. Peace, love, happiness. See you next time.